I'm here with uh, Mr. Beckett Cook, uh, who has an amazing story about how he overcame homosexuality and uh, became a Christian. And you also wrote a book about that, A Change of Affection. It's titled A Change of Affection. And uh, I'm going to read it, by the way, because your story is so amazing. And every time I listen to it in an interview that you gave and was, in, was on YouTube or something, it came alive to me, really. Uh, everything you said and and uh, I think it's really special so uh, before uh, you tell everybody how you came to Christ I was uh, interested in uh, if you had any um, relationship with Christianity before you became a Christian or um, how was your mentality towards that or or did you grow up in um, did you grow up in a religious family or where you yeah yeah, so I'm happy to be on your show, um, and I'm in Los Angeles, which is fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I grew up in Dallas, Texas, and I grew up in a Catholic, a Roman Catholic family. And so I grew up going to Catholic mass every, you know, almost sometimes every day, um, but, you know, every week, every weekend for sure. And I, um, I grew up going to Jesuit schools my whole life. So I went to Catholic elementary school, high school. And, um, and so religion, I mean, uh, you know, the religion was very much a part of my life growing up, but I never felt a connection to God as a child, as a, you know, growing up, I never felt any connection to God because, um, because, you know, at a very young age, I just, I knew that I was attracted to the same sex and, and so it just like, I just, the idea of God was not even on my, I didn't even desire to even know him or know much about him because I just was, I was so focused on my own desires. And so, um, so yeah, and I, but all my siblings and my parents were born again Christians, which is it's a whole nother story, but they were all Christians. And so I knew you know, I was very aware of their faith, but I knew that, um, especially as I got older into high school and college, I knew that I could never be a Christian because I was gay. And I, and I didn't even want to be, I didn't want to be a Christian because I, I didn't want anything impeding my life as a gay man. So I, I, I was happy not to believe in God. And, and then we can get into this, but then I, after college, I moved to California and to Los Angeles and, and that's kind of where it fully became my identity. Homosexuality became my full identity. And, um, and, you know, I became friends with a, a whole fun group of friends and, um, in, in LA and they were all, in, we were all in the, in show business, you know, basically like producers, directors, actors, writers, and, um, and I was, you know, I had, I was having the time of my life, you know, and I was going, I was dating, you know, dating a ton of guys. I was in a ton of, you know, five serious relationships with guys, lived with them. And my friend group, my group of friends, we never talked about God. God, it was just assumed that God didn't exist. These were all, all of my friends were from like very prestigious like colleges on the East Coast, like Princeton and Harvard and, and those colleges. And so they, they were just like, God was not even an option for anyone. We didn't even talk about it. So in Los Angeles though, I was having so much fun and I was, I was meeting everyone and you know, hanging out with movie stars, going to people's homes and for dinner parties and going to the Oscars and the Emmys, the Golden Globes and all the you, award shows. No you know um, movie stars? <laughs> it's like... It's just like when you, well, because all of my friends were in the business. And so, and so like my best, one of my closest friends, he worked for Diane Keaton. And so I met Diane Keaton and we, I went to her house and, you know, her vacation home. And, and then he was also really close friends with Minnie Driver when, when she was doing Goodwill Hunting and, uh, and we became really close friends. And, and they just, you, you just like, when you're in LA and you're working in the business, you just meet everyone and you become friends with a lot of people. And so <laughs> that's what happened. And I was just always invited to 
these dinner parties and to the Oscars and the, you know, all the award shows and the after parties and fashion weeks in New York and Paris. Like I was always a part of kind of like this whirlwind of like this um, exciting group of people. And, and I was always in the middle of it, in the mix of this kind of group. And so I, um, I did that for a very, very long time. And I had, you know, and I, like I, I talk, I'm sure you may have heard this in one of the interviews, but I, you know, there were all these, so many things that happened that, but like one night I went to Prince's house, like the singer Prince, he, he, at least like 10 minutes from where I live, but he, he used to have a house like right up the hill and it's a gi- it was a gigantic, gigantic house. But um, I went there one night and, cause a friend invited me to a party at his house and, and it was just like 50 people and he performed for three hours in his backyard in his gigantic backyard. Wow. And so I was having all these extraordinary experiences and I was going through all these relationships with guys and I really enjoyed my life. And I was kind of like, this is what life is all about. It's about like, you know, finding true love and it's about having these great experiences and, you know, making, being successful in my career. I, at that point I was like a production designer in Hollywood, but um, so it wasn't until around it well it was in 2009 when I kind of had this moment of is that all there is to life when I when I really started to question I mean I had always questioned the meaning of life but it it didn't come to a, a head until 2009 when I was at Paris Fashion Week and I was at an after party after one of the shows the runway shows and I just felt a complete sense of just emptiness and that uh, like meaninglessness. Like, what is this? Like, I, everyone's dancing and drinking champagne and everyone from the fashion world is here. Kanye West is here, like all these people, but this is not fulfilling anymore. Like this used to be fun for 15 years or whatever it was. It used to be so much fun, but now it's not fun anymore. And it's not, I don't know how it's going to sustain me for the rest of my life. I mean, I can't just keep, <laughs> Yeah. I can't just keep going to parties and going to like fabulous things my whole life. Like it's not, it's not doing it anymore. And so I was coming to the end of myself and the end of my rope and, and then as God would have it. So I got back to LA after Paris, as you probably know. And then I, Six months later, I was at a coffee shop in Los Angeles, and um, I was with my best friend who was gay, and he, he and I were just chatting and having, you know, the, our usual kind of weekend thing and hanging out, and we were sitting outside on the kind of the terrace or the patio of this coffee shop, and we noticed, like, suddenly we look over and we notice a table next to us. And it's a group of young people with Bibles on the table, like actual Bibles. I don't have my Bible with me right now, but um, me neither. they had Bibles. Yeah. They had Bibles on the table. And that was a shocking sight to see in LA. Like I had never seen a Bible in public in, L- oh, in Los Angeles. It, it's so special to see a Bible in Los Angeles. It's so rare. Yeah. It, I n- literally never had seen anything like this before. Um, I'd, I'd never met a Christian in LA, never, like in 15 years, uh, in three, two hours, but yeah, 15 years. And so I was curious, you know, because I had had that night in Paris six months before. So I was actually, when I saw the Bibles, it was almost like this open door, like, because I was actually curious at that point in my life and I was seeking, I wanted to know some answers. I needed answers, you know, I needed to know what life is all about. So we ended up in a conversation with these people and I asked them, you know, what do you believe? I, I grew up Roman Catholic, you're an evangelical Christian, like, what do you believe? 
and why do you believe it? And, and they, you know, they talked about their faith. They talked about what they believe. They told me they went to this church in Hollywood called Reality LA, which is on Sunset Boulevard. And, and they, they, you know, and then of course I, I, asked, I asked them, you know, what does your church believe about homosexuality? And they said, well, we believe it's a sin. And I was just kind of like, okay. And, you know, if I, if they had told me that a year before, or two years before, I would have just like stopped the conversation. But because of that night, six months before, I just was open to that because I thought, well, what if, what if God does exist? Which at that point I was, a, I was pretty much an atheist because I, I just thought the Bible was a book of myths like you know ancient myths like a greek myth or roman myth and so I, I thought you know what if god does exist there is a slight chance that that's possible and what if homosexuality is wrong and i don't know it and what if i built my entire life on this false foundation and i don't know it so i was really curious and and they 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 said you know why don't you come to our church next sunday and i said well i don't know you know just give me the address and I'll think about it. And because it was a big deal, you know, to, to kind of, to go to an evangelical church mm -hmm. would be betraying my friends in a way. It would, because like the evangelical Christians, according to me and all of my friends and anyone in LA, yeah. evangelical Christians are the enemy. Like they're like the absolute enemy. So like for me to go to an evangelical church, you know, as a gay man would be like, uh, it's, it would be like blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> it would be blasphemy to the gay community, you know? And, yeah. and so it was a big risk. And so I, I thought about it the whole week and I wasn't really sure if I was gonna go. And then the following Sunday rolls around and I woke up and I, I was like, I guess I'm going to go to this church. And, you know, I just drove there by myself and I got to this auditorium and, and it's a meets in a, like a public high school and on sunset. And I got to this auditorium and I, I, I had never been to an evangelical church, so I didn't know what it was going to be like. I walked in and the, the worship music was playing, the band was, you know, the worship was playing and, and people were singing and standing. And I, I walked and I just sat, I found a seat by myself in the front. And, and there were about, you know, I think like 800 people there mm -hmm. in this auditorium. And I found a seat and I kind of was just like, in this, like kind of taking all this stuff in and didn't really know what to think about it. And then the pastor comes out and he starts preaching an hour long sermon on Romans chapter seven. And he's just like preaching the gospel the whole time. Like he, he, he's, he's the, this pastor is particularly gifted and anointed by God to, I mean, he, cause he's just, when he preaches, it's just, it's like electric. It's so, it's so, and it's all gospel. And so he was preaching and preaching and, and I just was like, whoa, like this is, I, I, I don't know what this is, but it's true. And I, I don't know why I believe this is true. And it was just like blowing my, everything he was saying was just like, was blowing my mind. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, this is like, and I, I, it was the first time I had really heard the gospel and understood it in my whole life. It was, a, I mean, I had gone to, you know, Catholic school my whole life and I knew technically what the gospel was, but this was the first time it really penetrated and I understood it. And so I was captivated by the sermon and, and he left the stage. Someone on the side of the church prayed for me. Um, this, I walked over to the side, this guy prayed for me. I walked up to this guy and I said, I don't know what I believe, but I'm here. And he said, let me pray for you. And um, so that was another like risky kind of moment because it was embarrassing. And then I got back to my seat and I sat down, everyone else was standing and worshiping for another 25 minutes. And I sat down and that's when it all, that's when it all went down. When I sat down, the Holy Spirit just like completely 
flooded my mind, my spirit, my soul, my body. And I just, I, God revealed himself to me in that moment. And I'll never forget. I mean, he just was like, I'm God. Jesus is my son. Heaven's real. Hell is real. The Bible's true. Welcome to my kingdom. And I just started bawling and crying and crying and crying hysterically for the next 25 minutes. I was crying hard. I was just crying uncontrollably. I couldn't stop crying. And it was so intense. And it was like, I was crying just because it was like Isaiah when he's in the temple and he sees God's holiness, he, he just falls, he comes undone. And that's how it felt. It just felt like it, it was so, to be in God's presence like that was so overwhelming that I just, I was blown, I was blown away by it. And then it happened a second time. So I got home after the service and I was in my bedroom and um, I was going to take a nap because I was so freaked out by everything. And a God did, a, I, the Holy Spirit just kind of like overwhelmed me again. And I, I immediately started ball, crying again and just crying and crying and crying. And I jumped out of my bed and in, and in, my, in the middle of my bedroom, I was like, God, you have my whole life. It's yours. I'm done. I'm done. And in that moment, I knew that homosexuality was wrong, that it was a sin. I knew that it was no longer my identity. It was not who I was. And I knew that dating guys was not a part of my future. And I didn't care because I just met Jesus. And I was like, I like that guy way better than all that junk from the past. So I was just like, good riddance to that life because I'm going with this one. And so that was just like, that was September 20th, 2009 at 2.15 p.m. or 2.30 p.m. And, uh, and my life has never been the same. I'm oh, sorry. It's, just, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a really uh, rare thing to experience, I think, because I don't know. I can, like, I, I know, like, two people who has happened this with, and you're one of them. So, so it's a really rare thing, I think. Um, uh, going back to your childhood, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, when was it that you kn first know, knew that uh, you're gay or felt like you were gay? Um, probably when I was uh, in seventh grade, which was, how old is that? Um, like, you know, a 10 or 11 or 12, like that area. And I, I mean, when I was at when I was young, when I was a kid, I was, I started to, I kind of started to feel like I was attracted to the same sex, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what to do with that. And, but, but definitely by like, you know, seventh, eighth grade, and then in high school, for, for sure. I, high, and when I got to high school, that's when I, I really started to explore my sexuality and go to gay bars in Dallas. And I, I became best friends with a guy in my high school who was also gay and we came out to each other and we, we went to gay. I mean, we did, I mean, we did crazy stuff. Like we went to gay bars, we went to nightclubs and like till five in the morning. And, um, you know, I, so I, I really experienced gay culture mm -hmm. at a very young, like when I was 14 and 15, I was, I was just like, experiencing every kind of aspect of gay culture and and so that's but still even in high school I didn't think I didn't really consider myself gay because that was such a like it was such a stigma at the time and it was such a derogatory term that I I, I just thought oh you know I'm this is what I'm just attracted to guys but I'm not I probably, if you had asked me in high school, are you gay? I probably would have said no. Like, I, I just would have said, I'm attracted to guys, but I'm not gay. You know, because that, it was just too, it was, it was too, there was too much stigma attached to it at that time in the 80s. I was in high school in the 80s. Um, I know I look much younger than I am. <laughs> I am <you. laughs> um, So, I, uh, so yeah, it wasn't until like, you know, even in college, I still was like, not, I, I really wouldn't have called myself gay. You know, I just was like, no, that's not, that's too weird. I'm not gay. But, but it was after, like right after college, 
uh, when I met my first boyfriend that, you know, it became fully my identity and I came out to everyone, to my family, um, my friends. Uh, looking back uh, now, when you're Christian, uh, what were the factors that influenced you to, to be gay? Or, you know, because uh, in the, these days, almost everybody is stating that you are born gay or you are born a lesbian or you're born LGBTQ plus or yeah. I don't know what, what else there's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, and of course, as a Christian, I won't accept that. And I think, you know, the Bible doesn't accept that. Um, you know, and uh, what, what, what do you think about that? Uh, what are the factors that influence young people or older people just, just in general uh, to decide that they are gay or, or not? Well, no. okay, so that, that's a lot of, there's a lot there. Um, yeah. I talk about this in my book a lot. I go, there's a whole section on, on you know, are you born gay, blah, blah, blah. But um, so, First of all, in my case, I mean, I don't know what, how it is now with people, but um, in my case, I mean, I never chose to be attracted to the same sex. It was never a decision I made to be attracted. I, of course, I chose to act on that. You know, that was a decision I made. Um, as far as what caused, caused my attraction to the same sex, I don't really know the answer to that. Um, I, there's several, I talk about this in the book, there's, you know, it could have been hormonal. There, there's, three, there's three theories, and no scientist really knows the answer to this question. But one is that there's, you know, gay gene, or there, it's a genetic, there's a genetic component. The second theory is that it's hormonal. When, and so when you're in your mother's womb, you get too much of uh, progesterone or one of the hormones, and that's what causes it. The third option is that it's environmental, that like, you know, something happens to you when you're a kid and, uh, and that's why you become gay or you become attracted to the same sex. It, or it could be all of those factors together. But the point is, it doesn't matter if you're born gay or not. Um, it, it, could, it, it very well could be genetic. You know, it could be a gene, but it doesn't matter because we're, because of the fall because of the fall of mankind in the garden, we are broken, are, we're completely broken and distorted. Everything's distorted. And so even our genetic coding is distorted. That's why there's birth defects. That's why there's people who are born with all kinds of issues, you know, with, with diseases or with, you know, birth defects or, or, or issues. So I'm not, so anyway, it doesn't, to me, whether you're born gay or not is a moot point. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter because we're all conceived, we're born in sin. And so it's just a part of, to me, it's, it's, it's just a part of the fall. And so once, once you understand the fall and you understand that everything has been corrupted because of the fall, then it doesn't matter. But personally, I think, um, I don't know, because I have five brothers, we had the same parents, and none of my brothers turned out to be gay. So I, so I don't really know. I, I was molested as a child. Now, you're gonna, this is going to be shocking, but when I was nine years old, I spent the night at, at a friend's house, and his father, I woke up in the middle of the night, and his father was molesting me. However, now you might say, well, that's why you became gay. However, I distinctly remember before that night already having same-sex attraction. So that, I think that night may have pushed me even further in that direction. But, um, but does that make sense that it, it doesn't matter what it is because it's uh, the yeah. fall has corrupted everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, reading the Bible and I, I grew up, uh, in a Christian family, my dad is a pastor and everything, and and uh, we grew up with the Christian stories, you know, from the Bible. And um, uh, a lot of times, you know, in the New Testament, uh, there are you know demons who who um, affect people's lives in a yes. wrong way, and uh, Jesus Christ 
you know, tells them to go away and they go yeah. away. Haven't you considered that option? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, it could have been uh, some sort of like, I mean, I'm sure it was like some sort of unclean spirit or like a demonic situation, like a demonic, I mean, I think it is, I think, I think that kind of that sexual distortion is mm -hmm. demonically fueled. Like it, whether it's a demonic possession or demonic, uh, I, um, what's the other term? Um, but I, yeah, I think that does play a big role in it. That Satan loves to, he loves to take whatever like distortion there is and use that and try to, you know, try to make it like even worse and pull us even further from God. So yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility. Yeah. Um, in one of your interviews, you mentioned that nobody talks about the dark side of um, homosexual lifestyles. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, what, what did you mean by that? Because I know that um, almost every media, almost, uh, and you know, um, especially Hollywood, and and it seems to me like that almost everybody is, is starting to accept homosexuality and LGBTQ, and uh, they, they already celebrate this lifestyle. But uh, it's real, uh, the, the story that you started to tell in one of your interviews about the dark side of uh, homosexuality, it rarely comes up, you know. What did yeah. you mean by that? Yeah, well, yeah, because it's so celebrated in culture and, you know, Ellen and all these TV shows and 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 a lot of my ex boyfriends create those TV shows and and like Glee the show Glee was created by an ex boyfriend and and these other a bunch of other shows but um <clears throat> so um the dark side is that because Ellen and Anderson Cooper on CNN and all these other kind of you know faces of homosexuality, they try to present this kind of as, as really kind of squeaky clean <laughs> as like, this is like a really like nice kind of lifestyle or whatever you want to call it. And, but it's not, I mean, it's, I've been, I've been to parties with these people and I've seen things that go on in the back rooms of parties and at night at clubs and, it's really dark. It's like, it's demonic. It's totally demonic. Like what goes on? I mean, there's like uh, multiple people involved in kind of situations and there, and even my friends who, my old friends who are gay and, and who are married to, you know, the same sex, they have open relationships. You know, they have full open relationships. They have sex with like all kinds of people and, um, and so it's, that's, the, that's the kind of darkness that I'm talking about because the world, the culture now wants to present LGBTQ as sort of this like perfect, you know, monogamous white picket fence sort of like life and relationship. And it's like, that's not really what it is. I mean, it's not, yeah, there are exceptions. There are some people who actually are like that, but for the most part, what, from what I've been through and I've lived that, I lived that life for many, many years. Um, it's, it's darkness. It's, it's total darkness. Yeah. Um, so when you first experienced the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, you immediately knew that this is wrong. I'm not yeah. gay. Uh, Jesus is, is, really cool <laughs> and he, he's for me and he died for me for my sins and I can be a better person and uh, so how did you break this to your family you know your friends your gay friends your your colleagues that you work with in Hollywood what, what did they say um, well my family they were my family was super excited they were they were just crying because they had been praying for me for years and years and years so they were so happy but my so my friends were shocked. <laughs> they were shocked. <laughs> they were so shocked when I told them I was a Christian, and especially the part about homosexuality being wrong. They were just like, 
a lot of them got extremely hostile towards me and I lost, I, I lost several friends, really close friends, like very, very close friends from since I was in high school. Uh, and, but in terms of Hollywood, you know, when I was on, when I was working on jobs on photo shoots uh, for like Vogue or Harper's Bazaar or these magazines or just different ad campaigns. I mean, I was just so like, I would tell everyone about Jesus and just tell everyone the gospel. And I was sure I was going to get fired, but I never did. Like I just, they kept hiring. I just kept getting more and more jobs. And, and, and um, I was just so fearless about it because obviously like one it's like you know when you see an amazing movie but this is times one million but when you see an amazing movie you want to tell you tell all your friends you're like oh my gosh you have to see this movie it's so great well after meeting jesus it's like you know <laughs> that's like way more and i just am like oh i was just i told everyone everyone i i mean at grocery stores at like every, on photo shoots on everyone i just told like oh my gosh jesus is real and it's crazy and it's amazing and and you know i was at paris hilton's house like several times i i did a bunch of shoots at her house and i i've met her many times but i i would i just would spreading the gospel all over her house like telling everyone on the set oh my gosh jesus is real you guys it's crazy <laughs> and uh, and no one even with Katy Perry, I was on a shoot with her and I was talking to her wardrobe stylist, whose his name is um, Johnny Wujek, Johnny Wujek. And he's an old friend of mine. And I, and I told Johnny, I was like, Johnny, oh my gosh, Jesus is real. It's crazy. Like the gospel's true. And, and Johnny's gay. And I said, it's, it, and I told him the whole, my whole story and that I wasn't, you know, gay anymore. And, and then Katy Perry was like listening to our whole conversation and then you know after like 30 minutes of us talking Johnny was very interested in in my story and and uh and then Katy comes out and she's like okay guys the bible study's over let's get back to work <laughs> but like I was just that's how I was all the time on the set with people uh -huh. that's so brave of you by the way well that it was people say that but it didn't seem brave because it, again it was just like seeing a great movie and telling it like oh my gosh you have to see this movie it to me it was just like it was came it just came very naturally to me you still got jobs in your field and you still work in hollywood with these big names or stars sorry no well so when my book came out my book came out a year ago and when my book came out i got blacklisted in hollywood so my agent, my agent dropped me and basically I got canceled in Hollywood uh, because my book, you know, my book is very controversial. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and so I, it was like working on the set with Julia Roberts or Jessica Chastain was no longer even possible because it's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to have a book out in the world, you know, about the subject. So it became impossible for me to work on the set with people uh, and my agent, my agency dropped me. Um, so I no longer, I no longer work in Hollywood. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, so weird that uh, LGBTQ is so cemented in Hollywood, you know, that these people don't have, you know, just a, a little bit of open, open mindedness, I don't know, towards Christianity. Um, yeah. Do you think that will change in the future or it's gone? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just going to get worse and worse. I think in the United States, I think it's, it's getting worse. You can see all the riots and everything. I mean, I, I think Christianity, it's the first time in our history, really, that there's actually really persecution for being a Christian and you can actually lose your job for being for being a biblical Christian, you know, who actually believes what the word of God says, especially when it comes to this issue of homosexuality, to even say that you could lose your, I mean, you could lose your job immediately in this town or in, in this country. And so um, I think it's only going to get worse, but I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, the, the first Christians dealt with so much persecution and from Rome and were burned at, you know, were, Nero burned them at his parties in his garden 
and and um and Christians around the world are persecuted and you know put in prison and and killed and so it's like this is nothing new to Christianity it's new to us in the United States because it's we've had it's we've had it good for so long and now it's it's not happening anymore <laughs> and I mean your whole country is founded on you know Christianity and God. Christian principles, yeah, Christian exactly. Principles, yeah. Uh, what's your experience about uh, churches? How do they handle homosexuality? Because I uh, I uh, read a lot of news about American churches and write about them as well at Faith Radio. And uh, in, in my experience, as far as what I read, um, American churches, the most of American churches accept homosexuality and, and they don't think it's a sin or they are not brave enough, you know, to tell everybody that it's a sin and, and the same sex marriage is, is off the table. If you're a Christ, Christian, what's your experience? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, uh, uh yeah, the, uh, the, you know, the church is downstream of the culture, you know, so I, I, I think that's happening in a lot of churches. I think, I think it's mostly, a lack of courage on the part of leaders in the church. It's a lack of being brave, you know, and actually saying this is wrong and we're going to, we're standing on the word of God. I think a lot of pastors are terrified to say that now because, you know, it could cost, it, there, it could cause so much, so many problems and there could be lawsuits and there could be, I mean, I know a lot of people just sue, sue churches now because, uh, if they don't accept them, if they, if they don't, if you're not accepted, you know, if you come to church with your, if you're a guy and you come with your husband and they say, Hey, like, we love you, but you know, this is not, this is not okay in terms of God's word to, to homosexuality is a sin. Those people can sue the church like easily. And I, the lawsuits are happening all over the place. And so I think pastors and leaders are terrified of even talking about this issue. So what happens is, I, I talk about this all the time, what happens is, so pastors are, are not saying a word about homosexuality. So what happens? That's when Satan, that's when Satan comes into the church and starts to sow doubt about this issue. And so when nobody, now uh, so many churches haven't even heard from the pastor, their own pastor, whether this is a sin or not. So there, they are starting to believe the culture. Mm -hmm. And so most, I think a lot of people in churches, a lot of Christians now just kind of think, well, I guess this isn't really a sin anymore. I don't really know, you know, cause like my pastor never talks about it. And, you know, maybe the Bible that was just kind of for that time. I, you know, so I, there's a lot of confusion around this issue mm -hmm. because no one talks about it. And they don't, uh, I mean, the, uh, who, the people who go to church, they don't read the Bible by themselves and realize that, oh my God, in the New Testament, there's, there's this and there's that. And, and so that becomes um, more and more true, you know, that homosexuality is, is a, it's a sin or, or they yeah, I, I mean, I, I think a lot of people don't read the Bible very much, a lot of Christians, and even if they do, and they, they read, you know, first Corinthians six, uh, or if they read second Timothy, or if they read the passages about homosexuality, maybe they think, oh, well, this is just because of that time, Paul wasn't aware of, you know, consensual homosexual relationships, which, which is a lie. He was aware of that because it did exist in the ancient world. And there, I have a lot, there's a lot of, I could talk about it with that, but there's, there's so much evidence of that in the ancient world. And um, so I think people just are kind of like, well, that it's called the cultural distance argument. So people think, well, that was, you know, Paul, he's talking about pederasty. He's talking about man, boy, love. He, he's talking about rape. Like the Bible talks about rape. It's not really about what we understand as advanced human beings now as like this kind of consensual adult homosexual love. It's like, no, 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 <laughs> that's not what Paul, Paul was aware of that. And, uh, 
and and God was aware of that, obviously. And it's funny because people, you know, they people always say to me things like, "You so do you actually believe that homosexuality is a sin?" I'm like, "Don't, don't blame me. Like it's God. This is this is God's word. It's not what it's not my word. It's God's word, and He actually, His word is." His, his word, his, his, God created sex and he created sex to be expressed within a very specific boundaries of, of a, one man, one woman in a covenantal relationship for life. And anything outside of those boundaries is destructive. Premarital sex, extramarital sex, homosexual sex, all of that is destruct. It all leads to destruction. Whether you believe it or not, it it will lead to destruction. And so, that's that's what that's why God. And, and so, I I think Christians just the culture is so powerful, and television is so powerful, and movies that they're just they're completely blinded now. Like so many Christians are just blinded, and they just think I guess it's okay now because everyone's saying it is. And there's like rainbow flags on every corner of the street. So like, I guess it's fine, right? And it seems so mean to say it's wrong. It seems so cruel to say it's wrong. But actually, it's actually loving to say it's wrong. So that's, anyway, that's I think the problem. I, I totally agree. I realized, and it scares me, honestly, that uh, now if I tell somebody that I don't believe that homosexuality is, is good, then I'm the bad guy, you know, yeah. and, and I'm hateful. And, and in some countries, I can be prosecuted for hate crimes. And it's just like, it's my opinion. I accept you. I, I, I love you. You know, you do whatever you want. But I, I believe this. And, and it's really scary what the yeah. world has become at this point. Um, you know, uh, I think the most um, Christians are most prosecuted um, by the rules at at uh, this area in uh, in Canada maybe or in yeah. uh, the Netherlands you know um, isn't that scary scare you I mean aren't you afraid that it will come to Amer the whole America and and then I don't know Christian I know yeah yeah I mean it could happen here and um, you know we just have to it's like I don't think it can I don't think it in california it's already happening it's already becoming like hate speech and you know so i don't know but there's still so many pockets of of the united states that are it's a very that's very conservative and very christian that <laughs> i can always <laughs> go back to <laughs> texas or somewhere else um but uh, yeah, I mean, it could happen in my lifetime. It could happen where it becomes illegal or, you know, to, to even say that it's wrong. And, um, but you know, it's like Paul was in prison. He was, he was beaten, he was tortured, he was shipwrecked and he didn't care because he was like on the, the mission for the, the kingdom of God. And it's like, if that's what God's gonna do, then that's fine, you know? I whatever i'm i'm willing to go there because you know what like shadrach meshach and abednego they were commanded to bow down to culture in babylon bow down to a golden statue by nebuchadnezzar and they refused to do it because they knew it went against god's word and they were willing to go into a fiery furnace but they did go into a, they went into a fiery furnace and there was a fourth person in the furnace with them and and which many people think is jesus or an angel but i think it may have, it's probably jesus but um pre-incarnate jesus but uh but so yeah so if god if that happens it's like a, it, it's like this life is a vapor i mean it lasts for two seconds and then and then you meet jesus face to face for all of eternity and what do you want you know do you want him to say well done my good and faithful servant or depart from me i never knew you like it, so it's, to me, it's like, I'm in the kingdom of God. I'm the son of a king. I'm, I'm royalty. Like I have, I'm an, I'm an heir to God, a co-heir with Christ. And so everything else is gravy. Like every, so whatever happens to me, 
yeah. is like, it's fine because I, I have eternity with God. Yeah. It's not so bad when you say it like that, you know, at first I was scared, <laughs> like, this is the future. No. <laughs> yeah. But, but in Hungary, it's, it's not that, uh, you know, uh, progressed yet. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I can feel strongly, you know, the liberal wind or whatever, yeah. just, just, just when I, when I, you know, turn on Netflix or something, there's a, um, an LGBT, uh, category already in there. Yeah. So, uh, we can feel it as Christians in here, hung, in, uh, in Hungary, but, uh, it's not so progressed here. So you can come here if it texts us because, you know, <laughs> yes. Yes. for you or Alabama or something. <laughs> yes. President, yeah. President, President Orban, is his name Orban? Yeah. Orban? Orban oh, yeah. yeah. How do you say it? Orban Victor. Orban Victor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he can protect me. He'll protect me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope so. Yeah. Um, um, we had uh, another guy at our radio station who was uh, a homosexual prostitute when I think he was 18 or younger and now uh, he's happily married and Christian and and he told us all about his experiences um, and tried to uh, he tried to send a message to people like he was you know and like you were uh, what would you say to these people who struggle with uh, same-sex attraction or or they think they are uh, uh, lesbians or or transgender you know or or they just feel this pressure from liberal um, mainstream mm -hmm. or I don't know um, and 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 they don't know what to do with it you know and they just give in that oh maybe I'm lesbian or or oh maybe I'm a I'm a I'm gay or, or whatever I don't mm -hmm. know uh, what would you say to them are you talking about like young people who are kind of raised Christians or are you talking about you just non-Christians? Just in, in general, uh, in general. but uh, maybe there are people who are struggling with this that are Christians. I don't know. I, I haven't experienced uh, in our church that, but uh, maybe there are. So it, in general, I mean, in general. Yeah, I mean... I would just say that um, that it's it's a again it's a dark world and um, it's not. I would seek after I would I would urge them to seek after God, and to to just beg God to have mercy on you know and just and 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 seek a relationship with God and you know read the gospels go to church and kind of and you know try you know not and just ask god to have grace on you so you could be born again and have the holy spirit in you to to open your eyes and because that, that's just darkness it's like if you're living you're gonna you're just living it even if you're a heterosexual and you're not you're not born again you're living in darkness like there's just that's it you're lost like heterosexual people are just as lost as homosexual people if they're not in Christ, if they're not born again. They're completely lost, they're in darkness. And so it's the same thing. I would tell anyone who is not a Christian, the most, the, the entire purpose of our existence is to have a relationship with the creator of the universe, the, the, the person who created us, God, and the only way that we can have that relationship is through Christ. So I would, I would urge people to seek after God and, and uh, whether they're gay or straight, like it doesn't matter, just seek after God. Cause, that, cause everything else is gonna, everything else is gonna let you down. Everything else is gonna pale in comparison. Even if you get married and have kids, all that's fine, but it's like ultimately nothing is fully gonna satisfy you except your relationship with the person who created you. That's it. Amen to that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I have one more question because I, I heard, I think uh, you talked about this uh, in Focus on the Family interview. Uh, that, uh, or, or I don't know which interview was, but uh, you talked about people asking you about uh, 
whether you're now heterosexual or or just celibate or or how um how, how does this work do you have still <laughs> you know battles with uh, same sex attraction or or god uh, totally uh helped you and and all that just went away or yeah i mean it's funny because like at the, i've talked about this so much and it's like i don't even really like talking about it anymore because i don't like to keep saying to oh i don't like to speak this over myself anymore yeah, yeah. that i still have some same-sex attraction i don't even like to say that because it's just it's speaking that over me and i just i just reject that and so really the bottom line is i'm a christian I'm single, I'm celibate, and I'm happy to be single for the rest of my life. I don't care. I don't need like Paul, the, the apostle Paul in first in uh, first Corinthians chapter seven says it's better to be single. He actually says, I wish everyone could be like I am single. So I, 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 without even getting into like, do I still have same sex attraction? Or not? I don't, it's like pointless to even get into that. I, I am a follower of Christ and I am celibate and, and I am willing to deny myself, take up my cross and follow him, whatever that means. And in sexuality and in any part of life, I'm willing to deny myself, die to myself and follow Christ. So that's where I stay. <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> Good. That's, 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 you know, amazing. Not a lot of people have the courage to be celibate, you know, uh, and, uh, all I can say it's God bless you, you know, and I, I wish you the best, honestly, because Thank you. your story is like amazing. And, and, and it's, it, it was so good to hear about this, you know, it's very rare to, to hear stuff like this. Thank you. I, it's, it's such a pleasure to be and uh, you know in budapest <laughs> budapest yeah well you have to read the book now because it because yeah. you know, the book isn't just about it's not just my story i do a whole second part on uh it's called reflections and i talk about this issue from all different angles and i use i use kind of passages from the bible like the rich young man and like esau selling his birthright for a single meal i use those passages to illustrate this issue even more so so get the book because it's fun. It's a fun read. It's a very fun read. I will. I will, honestly. Uh, and it's just good to know your stuff, you know, when you're a Christian. It's, it's good to know more, you know. And I think I'm going to write, a, a, I'm, I'm going to, I'm writing another book right now, but um, I think I'm going to write uh, just a very short book. It's going to be, it's going to be called like a quick reference guide to homosexuality in the Bible. And I'm just gonna, it's literally gonna be like 10 pages, 20 pages long, like really short. So Christians like you or Christians can just like look at it and say, and like if someone says, well, yeah, cause there's so many things like people, people say, oh, well the word homosexual, homosexual wasn't even put in the Bible until 1946. And I'm like, yeah, because the Bible was written in Greek and Hebrew. Like obviously the word homosexual, but Paul, and anyway, I, I can explain that's a whole other episode, but I can explain why, where those words came from, the, the original Greek, where, how it came from the Septuagint and, and, and uh, from, from Leviticus that Paul used and Arsenikoite and Malakoi. And, um, but I wanna write a very, really short guide for Christians just to like be able to say, oh, no, 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 like this is why it's, this is where the word came from. This is what it means. This is why Paul uses these two words. Like, so I want to I want to make that really simple for people. I, I wish you good luck with your next yeah, book. Yeah, thank you. And thank, thank you. you very much for being with me and and uh, you know talking about this stuff. Thank and you for I, having me. Thank you very well, thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll let you sleep. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Have a good day. You good too. Good night. Okay. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.